All right, guys, thanks a lot. Chris Sims well on his way right now to becoming the first Texas quarterback with back-to-back 10-win -back seasons. Yes, and as well as he's playing, Texas at m is their own worst enemy. They've had four turnovers and given up two big pass plays. All right, coming up is the Capital One Halftime Show. We're going to have a look at the Junction Boys movie that's ahead on ESPN. Also, some of the great radio calls of the season. All coming up after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Amen. We're Texas. Rodgers along the sideline, another one. They're still in deep trouble at midfield. They tried to do a couple of... The ball is still loose as they get it to Rodgers. They give it back now to the 30. They're down to the 20. All oh, the band is out on the field. He's going to go into the end zone. He's going into the end zone. Will it count? The Bears have scored, but the bands are out on the field. And the Bears, the Bears have won. The Bears have won! The trombone player still feeling that football in the back of his head. It's been 20 years since Joe Starkey had that unbelievable call. And it's hard to believe that that will ever be topped. Although this year we came extremely close. A 29-yard field goal put Kentucky up three with 11 seconds left and seemed to give the Wildcats the win. We have two calls, one from the LSU Sports Network, the other from UK Radio. They're on the cusp of one of the biggest upsets in years. Final play of the game. Randall stops, throws it as far as he can. That's the most unbelievable inning I have. That, that is right up there, Tom, with the, the Stanford play. Stanford Cal return. A 21-yard run by Auburn quarterback Jason Campbell had the Tiger fans thinking they'd put the Bulldogs on ice. But on 4th and 15, with a minute 25 left, Georgia had other thoughts. Here's 80-year-old Larry Munson. Snap to David Green. There he goes in the corner again, and we jump up. Touchdown! Oh, God, a touchdown! Somebody went up high. Was it, was it Watson or Gibson? Michael Johnson up high. We're trying to put glasses on. Furman took a 15-14 lead with 7.4 seconds left, with Billy Napier passing to Bear Reinhardt. And then decide to go for two? Here's the call from the Appalachian Sports Network. Napier puts it out, pass, pick off! Oh, here goes John Jeffrey! Lateral, Sedari Black! He's going to block somebody with it! Derek yes! Black's going to get yes! on the way! Woohoo! Derek Black's going to go! He's going to go! And he's going to go on the way! That's how they ask you! That's not Appalachian State! Oh, my God, Derek! That will go down in history! We're going to get penalized here because, folks, I'm ready! Who cares? Big time celebration. Of course, it wasn't like the USC play. He really meant Cal and Stanford <laughs> in the early 80s, not in the late 80s, but we'll give him that. And it also wasn't Close. a touchdown. It was two points. But Larry Munson, 80 years old or not, we need our glasses <laughs> to find those touchdowns as well. Yeah, nobody ever said Larry Munson had great eyesight, but he's the best announcer I've seen in the business. All right, you're allowed to be a homer when you're a radio guy in college football. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll continue with more of the Capital One Halftime Show in just a moment. From here in New York City and Times Square.